1444, friends, was a place of love, happiness, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding, no, I, I, it was horrible, it was the end of the Hundred Years War, and everybody was murdering everybody left and right, yeah, it was pretty, it was a tough place to be in, but guess what, in a Europa Universalis 4, with the King of Kings DLC, France still remains, by far, the chattiest nation in the game, and I'm gonna show you why the French are the real King of Kings of this game, eh, get it, get it? Now, boys, if we get 10,000 likes on this video, I'm gonna do the second part where we conquer basically all of Europe. And if we get 14,444 likes, then I'll release the video as my next video. So that's right, if we get the like goal for 14, 14, 44, then we'll do the next video instantly. So pretty much when that like goal is reached, we will have the next part released. And I am trying to get to 190,000 subs by the end of this year. So if you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing. And hey, even if you don't enjoy the content, still 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 subscribe okay just just do it if you enjoy discovering new worlds you're gonna love today's sponsor star trek fleet command a free to play 4x mmo game with an open world set in the star trek universe from the alpha to the omega quadrants all for you to explore you have iconic star trek characters like captain kirk and spock coupled with stunning graphics to navigate the lore of the beloved star trek franchise battle other players from all over the world and forge alliances in a thriving community with the new immersive Star Trek story in the Kelvin timeline, which offers a fresh narrative experience exploring alternate dimensions and storylines. My favorite part about Star Trek Fleet Command is that you can build mighty ships like the USS Enterprise, as well as you get massive amounts of events every single month. You can use my promo code to get 10 epic shards of Kirk. Simply download Star Trek Fleet Command using my link in the description. Once in game, go to your profile settings, choose general, and at the very end sign up for your Scopely account. Also, go to the official website and redeem promo code ENERGIZE by going to store and then click promo codes. Star Trek Fleet Command's fifth year is here and there's tons of special contests, experiences and giveaways including real world activities to honor the game's legacy and to celebrate the dedicated player community that's made it an award winning game. So don't miss out on all the amazing 5th anniversary content and use my link below to download the game for yourself. Of course, the French do start with one of the best armies in the world, and we have the famous general Jean Bureau, which um, which means John Office. Okay, his 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 office is the battlefield, eh? <laughs> Boys, he is of the f he is of the fighter. That's what I'm saying here. It's a fairly standard opening for the French, but I do have a new tactic today compared to my previous run as France in uh, in the previous patch, and uh, I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. So we're not gonna give the plus one mana privilege from the get go, which is I know amazing, but we're trying this out because I feel like it's uh, gonna be beneficial. We'll give the plus one mana points after we do a specific mission. We want to do this mission here, appease the dynasties a little bit earlier in the campaign to do that we need to get 60 nobility loyalty and we also need lowered liberty desire and opinion with our appenages so we're gonna focus on getting that done first and then afterwards we give the plus one mana privilege because we want to be aiming for the uh, crown seat of paris where we get 20 reform progress per monthly admin point so we can get a ton of freaking reform progress in the early part of the campaign when it's really hard to get it right obviously we're also going to be going for the refine the bombards to get those uh, cannons before cannon tech is available and a few other missions we're gonna try and maximize our mission tree which uh, is an absolutely amazing mission tree so of course the first war is gonna be against the English which we will be totally schnapple dupe in here as such we are making them our rivals together with the Burgundians and the Aragonese why am I not I want to make other rivals why am I why is Austria not a rival option I guess I have to wait for a, a month so it refreshes and then I can get the Austrians as a rival because I really want to make the Austrians a rival I don't want to make the um, Aragonese might even get an alliance with Castile now that I think about it we might be able to get a PU on them and um, then we have essentially all of Iberia peacefully without having to fight for those lands right if we get our dynasty on the throne so tell you what let's get that alliance with uh, Castile and that puts us over the diplo relation slots but tell you what else I'm gonna dismantle the alliance with the Provence here's why previously what I did was I went for the Provencal question and I went for the house of Allah event which makes them uh, our PU 
but because they nerfed the event massively, it's not worth it anymore. It's better just to fully annex them. You take a little bit of extra aggressive expansion, but then you get for 15 years, minus 15 aggressive expansion impact. Toggle that in with the fact that we're going to do, do our best to uh, become the papal controller by allying, getting relations with the Pope and so on. So we get the 20% aggressive expansion reduction from the being the papal controller and we're going to do a few more things around so we can expand super fast with very little aggressive expansion by comparison. Also want to put it out there that France's starting vassals are a unique French type of vassal, namely an appanage, and you have some different interactions with them. For example, you can contribute to the capital where they increase their liberty desire, but they give you some of their development. You got the regular vassal interactions as well, and you can also request extra levies, return land, seize court resources, which essentially seizes their mana points. We can also lower their liberty desire for the cost of 20 reform progress, get one of their generals as well. So let's do our estates first and foremost. We're going to give out the uh, diplomatic uh, bonus here from the religious diplomats, clerical education, essentially the holy trinity and the standard estates here, which is clerical education, court positions, and economic freedom for the burghers or bourgeoisie. We also want to get the extra national tax modifier because the French also have the juicy Versailles monument that offers an extra 20% national tax. In the early part of the campaign, tax is pretty good. It's still not bad with the more recent patches in the mid to late game. Of course, trade is still king with production, but it's just made tax over a little bit better. And in the early part, tax is by far king and the French are the best area to have all of those taxes in because most of their provinces have really high development and especially really high tax development like eight in Paris, five in Chartres, five in Nemours, six in Reims and so on. Essentially, it's really, really good tax dev. The uh, minus 15% diplo admin and military advisor cost reduction privileges we're giving out after we get one stability since uh, it would increase the cost of getting stability and we want to get one stab so we get our passive prosperity ticking in our provinces to get the goods produced and dev cost and autonomy bonuses. Again, a standard. Most of you that watch my videos know this by now, but just in case anybody's new here. Hey, you know what? Let me know in the comment section if you just found out about that now or if it's just something I probably should stop mentioning every single video. <laughs> Increased levies is a big deal too since you get 26% extra manpower from the get-go. That is juicy as schnapps, boys. And of course, the indebted to the burgers so we get the uh, money needed to fight our initial wars against the English and whoever else we're going to be fighting here. Okay, we got a pretty good uh, agenda here. Improve relations with the Pope since we were planning to do that anyway. We might as well get also one extra papal influence in the process, increasing our chances of uh, becoming the papal controller later down the line once we invest said papal influence in becoming papal controller, obviously. I'm also going to get royal marriage with all of my ampanages, and I'm just going to try and get 125 relations with them so that I can uh, do that mission as fast as I can. I'm also going to need some more units for the war, so I'm going to recruit a mercenary company. Let's say the Grand Company over in Perigord looks good to me. And let's also not forget to seize the Crownlands, bringing us up to 35% Crownlands. I'm also going to get that alliance with the Pope and I'm going to improve with them too. At the same time, I'm going to cancel the guarantee on the uh, Scots. Don't really care about these lands too much. Now, I know one thing you could do is you could ally the Scots and you can uh, bring your troops over in Scotland. And then as consequence, you can use the Scottish lands as a base from which you attack the English in their actual provinces. But it's also extremely easy easy to get the war score to enforce your deal by getting the English possessions in the mainland and occupying all of the Portuguese lands which is going to be in the war since Portugal is allied with the English from the get-go. So we don't even need to step foot in here and we can take all that we want plus the uh, province of the Pale. Since it doesn't have any adjacent fortification we can take it to and we can use it to expand in the Irish lands afterwards. Thus in my opinion rendering the alliance with the Scots useless. One month passed and we still don't have uh, the Austrians as potential rivals. Is this a bug or something? That's just weird. That's actually just weird. Guess I'm gonna have to go for the Aragonese then. And speaking of rivals, I am gonna be sending the uh, Burgundians a scornful insult to get the um, extra 10 power projection from having that. I'm also going to embargo all of my uh, rivals to get even more power projection. Remember, end of the day, power projection has a few things it does, including it increases the morale of armies that you have, so your troops are gonna be in the fight for longer, and having over 25 power projection gives you one extra leader without upkeep having 50 gives you one extra of each mana points oh dude byzantium just uh, revoked the clericoi they re they basically
to revoke the union of the churches here. Oh, that made everybody pissed. Wait, what? Friendly attitude towards France. And not really vassalizing because they still have vassals of their own. Very interesting, very interesting dilemma here. But no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna bother with that area. Just yet, we're gonna be in the Balkans very soon. Not to worry though, we're gonna be there super soon. And I kind of messed up. I, uh, I send the embargo on the English instead of just declaring war on them on the uh, 11th of December. So now we gotta wait until the 3rd of January. It'd be like that. Don't make same mistakes as me. But hey, we're here now, boys. So let's set up the uh, war target for, I don't know, Maine or something like that. I guess that worked. Let's go, boyos. Totally gonna crush them now. Yeah, I've also changed uh, John office here and the Southern Army because we're gonna be fighting the uh, Portuguese troops more than we're gonna fighting the English ones. And if the English do land, they normally land somewhere in the northern bits of Iberia before pushing us. So we're gonna definitely get more fights in this area in the south rather than the north. The north, I'm just gonna try and get all of these provinces occupied fast and then focus on Portugal, essentially. Remember, you can also give objectives to your vassals or better yet, ampanages if you like to. So you can ask them to uh, occupy whatever provinces you want them to occupy. Hey, you, take over this armor neck. Hey, you, Fua, take over here. Good, good, good job, guys. I'm proud of you. Maybe, maybe not really proud. Maybe I'm disappointed in you. What are you even doing with your life? Playing video games all day. What's wrong with you? Can you just go outside for once and smell the grass? Hey, we got the last jousting tournament getting us an extra 10% morale of armies and army tradition. So now we're getting uh, passively army tradition 0.99 yearly and we have 3.12 morale of armies significantly more than the English armies have or the Portuguese for that matter. Another thing to note is that because we've secured the southern bits here, we can do this mission and it's going to be significantly cheaper to take these provinces in the war deal or if we do this mission after we've already taken the provinces we can get map power recovery and uh, war exhaustion reduction for 15 years as well as lose 10 devastation in both of the provinces well there goes the uh, army of chan talbot or as i like to call them skibidi boo no army who <laughs> Talbot. That's that's the that's the whole thing. Come on, Portugal, come back here, ya boy. We need to get four battles won so we get our Kanonenstein and for our armies. I don't know why uh, all of a sudden I'm Australian, but shut up, okay? I do declare Portugal army gonna be bye bye real soon, boys. Gonna be real bye bye soon. Okay, let's go uh, chase him over, cause uh, we want to get those uh, battles done for Jean Borowski. Double whammy, boys. We're on our way to get that last battle, and we can also do appease the dynasties. Because because we just got 60 loyalty with the nobility. This is gonna give the uh, appanages a little bit of development, but it's also gonna give us loyalty equilibrium for the nobility and one extra diplo relations for 20 years, bringing us up to eight diplo relations from the start of the campaign, which is pretty significant. And as consequence, now we can give the uh, plus one mana privileges for the estates. Take that, Portugal. That's what you get for being a loyal ally. How dare you make us all embarrassed here? You you set the standards too high, okay? You should do what real Latins do and betray their allies when they most need them, all right? In true Roman fashion, come on. Have you not even read about the Romanians at Stalingrad? <laughs> I blame the Germans for that, by the way, okay? Just saying. It's all their fault. We got no heavy weapons. Clearly, we couldn't have done nothing, all right? Come on. So now, guys, we're gonna get our delicious bombards in the uh, capital of Paris here. So we got cannons freaking, what, 20 years, 15 years earlier? Take note, these are mainly good for, um, for just sieging down stuff a little bit faster than anything else, so I'll keep that in mind. And if we take this from a historical perspective, the Hundred Years' War was, in fact, one of the initial engagements, well, one of the main wars where cannons were used to a very high degree, especially towards the later part of the war by the French, actually. So this is, uh, to a certain extent, pretty accurate, really. All right, we got most of the provinces that we need now to do our war deal, and we just need to wipe out a few more units that the English have to lower their support for this war. So we're gonna wait for them to land in Calais, and then we're gonna stack wipe their entire army in Calais. This should give us... Oh, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Come on, you gotta reinforce. What the hell did you stop there for, brother? What are you doing with your life, bro? Oh, you guys better have movement lock by the time we destroy that army. They do? They don't. Okay, don't cancel. They didn't cancel! Oh! <laughs> Okay, that is actually the entirety of their army, isn't it? Yup. Yup. No more army for the British. Now, we could get more war score here from uh, waiting for this. We can get eight more war score. And of course, that's also going to bring their war weariness down the longer we wait for it. We can wait for one more year since we don't need to seize crownlands for another year. And if really, I really, really need to, I could always just do this. And that's going to lower the war score for uh, these two provinces 
in the south and as consequence I could probably get what I want right now actually. Well would you look at that Scotland decided to attack the English now that the English have 2,000 units and zero manpower in reserve. Uh, I'd say Scotland is right now the biggest jackal of this entire session. What do you guys think? Okay now see this I was not expecting. Castile declared on England. For what? Labor- bro. <laughs> Oh my god, what the hell man? Okay, inter very interesting. Now, literally all hell is breaking loose here. Burgundy just declared on Provence, and I'm assuming they're gonna take these two provinces, because that's pretty much the only thing that they can take from Provence. Maybe even Lorraine provinces. You know what, that's not bad for us, because we're gonna be attacking Provence right after we finish the war with the English. Okay, we're close to uh, 1449 November, so I'm gonna click the retake Gascony here, so we can get the uh, Gascon provinces for cheaper now. And as consequence, we actually can take all the provinces we want and we can even take a little bit of money as consequence not too much But better than nothing, right? All right, let's do the peace deal. There you go That is war number one done It also means we got Calais now and we got the pale meaning we have very easy access into uh, The entirety of Ireland and as consequence Scotland and what's left of the British Isles afterwards We can also do some more missions now such as liberate Normandy It's gonna give us minus five crownlands for the clergy and bourgeoisie bringing us up to 21% crownlands. No, I did not give the plus one mana for the nobility because I messed up. I shouldn't have given one of these privileges because now I don't have space to uh, give out the nobility integration policy, which I have to give before starting to integrate my um, ampenages in a few years from now. Otherwise, I get the minus three diplo rep and we do not want that, of course. And another thing I'm going to do in this run is I'm going to try to get the HRE Emperorship. So I'm going to be allying most of the electors that I can ally right now, which I think is almost everybody except mines yep and they're actually close to allying me too and then just hope that i'm gonna get elected it's not too hard if you ally them you improve relations you get as high of relations and so on with them as possible it is actually doable i'm also gonna get the uh, papal emissary privilege which offers yearly papal influence plus one flat you can only get that once you have 20 papal influence so keep that in mind let's invest a little bit of this here so we get at least a chance of getting the uh, next uh, courier controller ship alenson we could restore the duke but that's going to make everybody even more disloyal and I'm not in the mood for that. So I'll just take the one stab hit and um, I'm going to stab up afterwards. That's okay with me. Point in case we just allied Bohemia. Didn't do anything else. Just allied them. We haven't even improved relations and they're really close to voting for us as it is. So <laughs> once we improve relations with them a little bit, they're going to absolutely vote for us as the next emperor of the HRE. We don't even need to get everybody. We just need to get four of them to vote for us. End of the hundred years wars gives us some admin points and one stabilitaten and there you go it's done 2.5 monthly and we're gonna get renaissance significantly faster this was added in the uh, king of kings dlc and i find it to be absolutely amazing asking other nations to get institution helps out immensely boys and look at that these guys are already voting for us 41 on the plus even hot diggity dong wait not everybody's voting for the austrians Ooh, i literally just need three electors to uh, to be my friendos excuse moi savoy declared excommunication war in provence hello hello provence uh, avec le oui, oui. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to bring my units over in the in the Irish parts so we can uh, get some money out of the English. Let's say when the war starts against Provence. You know what? I, you get my drift right now, boy. Okay, now that's just wrong. Are you freaking kidding me? Brittany actually used a threatened war and got Andrew. Pro what, dude? What? I don't even know what to say anymore. What is actually going on here? Not really sure there is anything left of Provence for me to take after this uh but i mean sure i guess we'll try and take some stuff we can cross from ulster to Ayrshire, even though they have naval superiority because they don't control either one of the sides so we just got military access and now we can just uh take all the money we can take from the brits that means we're gonna be getting 570 ducats fixing our economy in the process we're not gonna take anything else right now because uh they're not a co-belligerated target so we don't want to get extra aggressive expansion for that okay what the hell is going on even provide even the Pope attacked Provence. Literally everybody just attacked Provence. They are not in the best of spots right now, are they? <laughs> not even close. Poor little old England tried to re-establish their troopers, but no, they're just gonna get schnapple doob -a -boop. Hell yeah, boys. They even have any more troops left? 1,000. Yeah, we're just gonna carpet siege everything here. Okay, this is literally getting ridiculous. Freaking salutes are declared on Provence too. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's let's uh, let's not all pile up on one nation, please. I, I'd appreciate it. All right, I think we got enough war score from the Brits. Uh, 
let's go for this. 105.79. We can get uh, war reparations? Close to it. We could actually get war reparations. Yeah, why not? Screw it. Let's do that. Now we got that going, so uh, let's bring our units back over to the Irish land since we're going to be expanding into Ireland. I gave it a little bit of an extra weight to see what happens with the southern bits that we also want to get a hold of, of course. So now that basically Provence is just these two provinces, I'm just going to turn them into a vassal, really. Obviously, vassalizing them is both cheaper from an aggressive expansion point of view and it allows us to retake their cores in Anjou and in uh, the southern bits here. So definitely going for that, right? We will be canceling their core on Maine, which is our province. And we're going to get all the money we can get from them too. There you go. All right, that means we're now at war with the couple of nations that they were still at war with and I didn't even realize. So we're going to take this province from the Pope and Saluzzo, which we were going to diplo vassalize. Now, uh, we're just going to white peace, I guess. Let's also do the Provencal mission, which gives us uh, one stability. We get one of each mana points for our leader as well and 20 prestige. But most importantly, we got minus 15% aggressive expansion from taking provinces, which is a huge deal. Let's see how we're doing here. 28% chance that we get the papacy. That is not so bad overall. Let's put all of our empennages on attacking the enemy now. And I'm going to have to improve with these guys as well. I'm in war with the Burgundians because they're allied to Saluzza and Saluzza called them in. Obviously, I went with the white piece option when it came to... Uh, uh, the Pope because I don't want to piss him off and I will be getting the core back here from Avignon because it is a core of Provence so I can just uh, ally the Pope again get those favors back up because I lost a lot of my favors now and uh, just ask them to return core to my vassal no need to fight for it we're also basically wiping out every small army that the uh, Burgundian side has so we can get the war score up and so we can uh, get that peace with them going and I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't just cancel the rivalry maybe I should cancel the alliance they have with the Austrians with the Bretons because these are honestly more annoying than anything burgundy i'm banning you from having any more troopers it's not acceptable you have any soldiers sir there you go zero soldiers and zero manpower we've actually completely raffle stopped look at the amount of units we wiped out over here <laughs> oh boys france gets restoration of union on milano hails to the yeah baby hails to the yeah all right that means we're gonna have to fight the austrian emperor because they are a part of the hre unfortunately the shadow kingdom did not yet trigger so they're still there i'll wait before I enforce this because we have a few years right five years until this expires So I'm gonna do it after I finish this war at least for real bro 71% Can we for once in any of my freaking campaigns get less than of course it didn't even fall at 71% brother Oh, and they no shot they fucking took this as bro. That was at 7%. Oh my god I'm so pissed right. I'm literally so pissed right now. Whoa, what did we just time warp? Did I just go through a black hole and come out on the other end and then we got a seven percent oh you motherfucker oh whoo whoo oh so I, I was if this fell again at seven percent i, I would have just i would have um i would have quit the campaign not even joking i'm so close to it i'm so tired of this horrible rng thank god for the black hole that uh brought us back in time though i love black holes don't you okie dokie boys let's uh piss out those there you go that is one out of the war we lost ninety thousand manpower in that war holy mother bro i mean i could just white peace salute so i don't really care about them too much so yeah it's whatever man okay time to uh see some crownlands and now we're gonna start integrating our empennages we need of course to have 190 relations with them and take note guys empennages are a little bit different when you integrate them because you can only annex empennages if you've seized crownlands so you gotta seize crownlands to be able to even start annexing an empennage i've seized crownlands twice so that means i can annex two empennages to annex more i need to seize crownlands more again that's just how it works it's a, a little bit of a different system but it's unique and actually i kind of like it i'm gonna do armoniac 2 with Auvergne at the same time and i'm gonna give out this privilege here that means that we're gonna get increased disloyalty from giving out the nobility integration policy but it also means we're gonna integrate these bad boys a little bit faster now oh wait no we can uh do another vassal annexation that means we've actually done three seas uh, crownlands so far i'm gonna chill for the period in which i'm doing these annexations once that's done we're gonna be attacking milan and let's also get the diplo annexation minus 10 percent and diplo reputation plus one making it even faster to annex our vassals 
rules. Also important to note, every time you annex an Ampenage, you lose 20 loyalty. Alright, now let's go with the war against Milan before it's too late and uh, we lose that particular CB over there. Boom shakalokos. We're gonna use this war also as an opportunity to basically just trash any sort of uh, size the Austrians might have. The smaller the size of Austria, the less likely that electors are gonna vote for them too. So we're gonna try and weaken them as much as possible. As for Milan, only 40 aggressive expansion to get half of Northern Italy. And remember, they also have the course here that we can take. So it's an absolutely juicy PU overall. But of course, our primary target and our main focus is gonna be on uh, the allies of Austria and Austria themselves before we peace out Milan. The Austrians are essentially doing the same thing we're doing. They focused on Bohemia's lands rather than ours. And we focused on their allies' lands and peaced out most of them. Now we're gonna go towards their own provinces. I cannot release too much stuff from them, but I could say release Styria, which is a huge chunk of Austria, but that also costs 104 Diplo for me, so maybe I could release Tyrol, which in turn means still five provinces, not bad whatsoever, and Celia, because they've gotten eaten up by Hungary? Um, no, probably not Celia. I'd say probably Styria, humiliate them, and maybe some money as well. That would be enough for me. Eww, 132? No, no, I don't think so, brother. No, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna take uh, Orleans as uh, vassal, I mean heir. 433 significantly better than what we have. We can appoint their heir as our heir by doing this. Boom. Arrivederci. It costs us a little bit of prestige, but it's worth it because check it out. Now we got a 433 Chadius Maximus instead of the 132. So that's one of the benefits of having Anpenages, right? They can come in massive handy. Looks like we cornered the Austrian army in uh, the province of Narbonne. Let's actually go into Milan. We've we basically got everybody out except uh, Saluzzo in Austria, which we're going to get out in a few moments. Let's do a little bit of Carpeticus Sigicum. The war is dragging for longer than I'm comfortable with, so I'm just going to take my uh, little bit of an L here, and I'm only going to release Tyrol. I'm not going to humiliate. Instead, I'm taking a little bit more money to pay off that one loan we made in the meanwhile, and now we just got to worry about uh, Trent as well as Milan. But the good part is that the Shadow Kingdom is about to trigger here, so once this is done, Milan is not going to be a part of the HRE anymore, and it's going to be less aggressive expansion with HRE nations that we're getting from uh, getting the PU with them and they're going to get above 50 imperial authority so they're going to do the reform which means that the relations were lower with the emperor after because right now most of these guys get relations with the Austrians because of that extra imperial authority gives them relations with them and there you have it everyone exactly everything I just said no more HRE in North Italy and zero imperial authority which dropped their desire to vote for the emperor considerably now we can uh, improve relations and as such we can get back to them voting for us rather than the HRE Emperor. Another thing that happened is because these guys are not a part of the HRE anymore it means they are an easy picking for me so I'm going to be attacking them. It's only 60% war score to get the Union so we don't need to wait for any longer here. 131 and uh, 94 and only 34 aggressive expansion to get a Union over these Juice Lords. We can use these Juice Lords now to attack their neighbors. Check it out. Nobody gives a snaps here. Nobody's joining in to help out their neighbors and I think that's uh, stack and weapon for the army of Venice. Now let's uh, siege down everything here before their other enemies siege everything else down. So yeah, we gotta rush this. Are you shitting me right now, man? Renaissance is back in town, as is Embrace the Renaissance mission here, which gives us uh, Jean Chloe, which is a 75% cheaper advisor. Woo! Okay, don't mind if I hire that broski. Don't mind if I do it all. Look at that, two ducats for this dude? Holy shit, that's cheap. We shall be a great ally and help out the uh, Castol here. Castol do need the help. Okay, please tell me I'm not at war with the Pope then now. Uh, Pope, please tell me you broke the alliance with the Aragonese. Yeah, I did. Okay, good, good, good. We good, because we're trying to get curry favors to get these lands from them for free without having to go to war, obviously, right? Time for Milan to be uh, unified once more with their additional two provinces here. Here. That's a good 21 development or 22 development we just got from a very, very easy war. Oh boy. Ottomans are at war with the Venetians. I might have done something bad here because if the Ottomans are going to destroy the Venetians, that's basically the only buffer between them and uh, the Italian bits, right? I'm going to show you guys a pretty nine head move here. So obviously the logical thing would be to vassalize Savoy because it's 29 aggressive expansion and you get all the cores on uh, Geneva and all of the rest of the stuff here that we haven't taken yet. 
Obviously, this is conflicting with our other Vassal Provence's cores, but still we get like four cores, which are pretty good. That being said, I'm not going to Vassalize. Here's why. Despite this being 29.8 aggressive expansion, by fully annexing them like this, it's seven aggressive expansion more, but we automatically get the uh, Monferrato as a Vassal because we fully annexed their former overlord of Savoy. If we were to Vassalize them, Monferrato would become independent, or if we wanted to annex that, that would be more aggressive expansion. And that is why it is a nine head move. Because look at that. Now, these boys are our Vassalski and and of course, we will be releasing Savoy once we are at peace from these three provinces and we'll be feeding them back Valois, Vaud, Nita, and Cuneo. Hey, we got prospering times. Perigord, that's not a bad province overall, man. Okay, so this is wine. If we were to go for the uh, military option here, we would get a lot more manpower and this is wine, so that would be eventually more manpower once we build our soldiers' household in that province. Diplomatic is not bad, but definitely gonna go for the manpower. Let's go, boys. Holy schnabadopes, that is juicy. Climbing that ladder back up here, and uh, we also are very close to getting what we want from uh, Aragon, which is their money, and then we're piecing out, obviously. Actually, hold up. They are my rival. We can also get humiliation from them. Hell yeah, I'm doing that. How many years has it been since we've been at war? Like, quite literally, we've been at war for the past 10 plus years, continuously, war after war. About time we had some peace here. So we can seize the Kronlands. Wait, uh, nobility. Am I gonna spend this yeah screw it all right let's go boom boom shaka look doom and that means we're at 50 so we're not gonna worry about that too much and it also means we can start integrating these bad boys after so so go ahead and uh, use our favors return core province avignon 33 favors really do need to come with the amount of uh, vassals i'm getting I mean, it's just reached a point where it's ridiculous how many vassals i got and subjects it really feels like i cannot stand still for five seconds without having yet another global war for just provinces i should have had a freaking thousand years ago but hey it is like that unfortunately once more we shall be attacking half of the freaking hre to get our provinces back here and sadly the pope's gonna join on their side because uh geneva which has my cores is gonna have to get cobladrado it's all gucci though i'll be getting the alliance with the pope back again after the war is done let's uh attack yes maximus let's actually focus on geneva first or better yeah let's focus on the smaller guys get them out of the war quickly this war should be enough for us to uh, completely make the Austrians a one-state nation by releasing Styria from the southern bits they got. Now, that is important because that's going to make it so that they lose the plus 25 large nation in the HRE bonus that they're getting right now. And with that loss, of course, we're pretty much going to have a guarantee to become the next emperor. All right, I spend 100 uh, military points to get my legitimacy up, which means that now Brandenburg votes for us too, and we can get mines easily to vote for us. I actually forgot to ally them before I started the war, so hopefully I get this war finished fast so I can get that alliance with mines. Ooh, we can form the gendarmes, which is a special government reform now. We can access the gendarmes as our tier 5 military reform, and it's going to give us a ton of bonuses here. But personally, I kind of like the musketeers since it allows me to recruit musketeers. However, that's going to be done a little bit later down the line. So I guess we can go gendarmes first when we get it for the first time, right? And then switch after. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, look at that. Mines is voting with us, not even allied to me, and they're already voting for me. <laughs> They really don't want the Austrians to be in charge, do they, anymore? This war dragged on for way longer than I expected it to, but, I mean, sometimes it'd be like that. All right, now let's release uh, Styria here, and I could give some of these lands back to Bohemia. Actually, that's not a bad idea. That's going to give me good relations with the Bohemians, too. going to cost me a bit of extra diplo pee, -pee but uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's A-OK. -okay. All right, that made them lose a lot of prestige, so that is just uh, juicy, my boys. Absolutely juicy. Now let's do the main piece deal with these guys here, which which is going to be take this for Savoie and give back Achisi, Cuneo, and everything else that needs to be given back. Plus, I'm taking Corsica for myself because uh, this is clearly French land. Everybody knows this. Boom shakalaka. 163,000 soldiers died in this freaking war. That was literally the first world war in my particular save. Let's also not forget that to get that alliance with mines now to basically consolidate our hold on becoming the next HRE Emperor. Check it out for these bad boys voting for us. Trier would vote for us too if we allied them. <laughs> 
Okay, you know what? Screw it. Let's just completely consolidate our hold. There you go. Everybody now voting for us. Come on, Cheer. Change your freaking vote over here. Means we are guaranteed to go down the French HRE Emperorship uh, path of our mission tree, which we have yet to explore. We haven't done that in the previous run, right? Okay, now let's also integrate the last of the Ampionages whilst we're at it. Oh, shit. I got minus 28. Diplo okay, we're gonna have to wait a while then. Whilst we wait to become the HRE Emperor, we can also do a couple more wars here. Like, uh, I want to take over the... Uh, Bretonian land. So that means we're going to be fighting the Burgundians once more. Say hello to Louis the 11th, the new emperor of the HRE, boys. We have become the HRE, which means we can join the HRE. And it's going to give us even more relations with all of these electors. So they're going to definitely vote for us in the future. We have taken control, everyone. Check out the HRE map mode. <laughs> Yeah, boy. I am loving it. That also pretty much ensures that we're going to get the inheritance from the Burgundians. And when it comes down to it, the branching missions, we're of course going to go down the HRE path since we are the HRE now. And we got it, boys. We got the union. Vittens of Francicus. I mean, with the Burgundicus. And there you go. Told you, once you get the HRE Emperorship, it's pretty much a done deal. Okay, we got to go back here then. And we've, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, half of Europe right there there we got half of freaking europe already boys <laughs> Okay, now we can do this mission here where the event Duchess of Burgundy dies. And of course, that means we inherit Burgundy and we got all of this. Oh my god, dude, this is redonkulous, man. This is actually redonkulous. We got their armies and everything too. Now we can also do the next mission, the Architecture, because we got uh, 12 temples. I guess we got some of them from those in, um, yeah. Have you known increase the temple size? I'm gonna wait with this mission actually, because I want to actually uh, inherit Provence before I increase the temple size and get it at least to level one so i get it to level two afterwards also if you guys want to get the save game i'm gonna make this available to everybody not just patrons and channel members you just need to join my discord and then you can get the save game from there make sure you read the rules to find out how you can access the save game links now i'm gonna i'm gonna actually save it here let me make a copy of the save so you guys can play from here right onwards and as such fully take advantage of it i have to say that by far this is the best path becoming hre emperor in my previous run in uh, the Domination DLC when I did it. I didn't go to HRE path. I went the um, regular expansion path, but this is significantly stronger. I mean, brother, we got the best provinces in Europe, and we barely have anybody in a coalition. Like, literally, look at this. Almost nobody in a freaking coalition against us. There's not even possibility to form a coalition against us yet. And I mean, if you want to have the uh, Big Blue Blob achievement, we got 110 provinces in 1474 with no freaking coalition. So yeah, this is also the path if you want to go down and get that achievement which obviously i have by now so i'm not going to be able to get it myself let's not forget to make full states out of all of the uh, provinces conquered from the burgundians this is extremely important otherwise you're basically not getting anything out of these and uh let's also get some more governing capacity we don't have that much so let's give out these privileges here to get it up to seven maybe 800 we can give one more oh and we managed to spawn faceting in liege very now let's make sure we get a uh, protect trade and oh wait is this in the English channel no it's not now we just need the protect trade in the English channel provinces so we max out the amount of uh, money we get from collecting in the English channel of course wait what we got Phrygia when the hell did they get Phrygia what so now with uh, Brittany out of the way we don't need to actually expand in Europe anymore for a tiny little bit of time I am gonna do a few things that make a lot of sense and hear me out in a few moments here I'll explain everything first off I'm gonna start getting more and more Imperial authority I actually thought that we had the first Imperial authority what the fuck? Okay, the first, uh, never mind. Anyway, we're gonna try and centralize the empire. That means we're gonna try to form the Holy Roman Empire as the French Empire, and as such, we need imperial authority. Easiest way to get that imperial authority is to just add more nations to the HRE after we got the third reform, the absolute Reichstabilität. So we're gonna be gunning for that. That means the only expansion we'll be doing is just in the Irish and the British lands, of course, which I have been completely ignoring, but now I'm gonna send one of my main armies there because it's time to unify. Ireland and get the British lands under my control. Plus, I'm gonna do a little bit of southwards expansion into what's left of Aragon. Apparently, Sardinia is a thing too now, so that's definitely an easy target. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send a scornful insult, or better yet, a regular insult to the Pope. I'm doing this because I'm making my choice here. I could choose either to make the Pope my vassal and give them all of my uh, possessions in Italy eventually with the mission tree, but I think that's stupid. I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna do this 
exists and as consequence subjugation cb on naples so now we can attack naples and basically vassalize them in a single freaking war we also got the ambrosian republic which means we got securing the uh, lands here of milan we either get diplomats and a few other awesome things here or we get core creation cost reduction and mercenary cost until 25 years that's pretty freaking massive to me that is actually pretty massive house united is done too so we can click this missionos and now the crown of naples is an easy target we're actually going to declare right now let's wait for our diplomat to come back the great part about naples being a uh, subject is that afterwards we have uh, the reconquest of course on sicily so we can attack uh, the aragonese with that particular cb and we can take sardinia in the same war afterwards so cute the fact that austria has just five remaining provinces <laughs> i'm also gonna get the uh, special french naval doctrine the letter of mark which gives us fleet movement speed that is really underrated by the way as well as uh, ability to capture more ships and disengagement chance so by far i'd say it's a good mix of the best naval modifiers for your fleets it's kind of surprising you know the french getting a awesome naval modifier i mean sure why not technically the french were a pretty big contender to uh being a naval superpower who we bet hungary's regretting becoming a pu of austria now aren't they also speaking of how the hell man a five province small nation keeping in check all of these uh massive hungarian lands here i feel like i need to speak to the austrians like i would to a bunch of small kitties you know give it back austria give back the lands to bohemia do it right now stop playing in the dirt austria stop it cool bit about naples is also that uh once you have the fort in their capital of naples you pretty much got the war score for whatever you want to do with them now to get the uh, vassalage over them it's going to be 80 freaking aggressive expansion holy shit man you know technically we could also get them as a personal union from an event that could trigger doesn't always trigger doesn't always favor us but it, it could but i'm not going to leave it to faith essentially i'm gonna i'm gonna do this myself i'm gonna wait till the first of january before i enforce this however and of course a little bit of money doesn't hurt never hurts at all sure some nations might join in a coalition against us but does it does it really matter it doesn't matter come on look at that that's super acceptable in my opinion we're just gonna improve relations with everybody and they're all just gonna love us and i mean absolutely love us also we can do the throne of naples the faith of naples allow them to be a member of the french dominion so we get 25 power projection we get a lot of uh, development in naples itself and they get a ton of modifiers that help them out they uh, should serve the crown which is going to give national tax modifier for 15 percent for oh my god that is really good we're gonna go for that we're gonna definitely go for that now we can also sell some titles 2400 ducats is a big deal we're just gonna develop our provinces to reach 20 percent again so we don't actually have the debuff there and just to give a sneak peek guys we're getting 50 freaking ducats from taxation alone we haven't even uh, properly set up our trade note here we can get up to 70 50 we can get up to 75 percent 80 percent of the node with the provinces we have right now which is going to be a lot more money from trade as well let's also get that national tax modifier monument in uh, paris versailles which eventually going to give 20 percent more national tax so we're basically just swimming in taxation money right now speaking of i also went for regional councils which allows me to get this particular edict which offers an extra 50 percent local tax modifier and in these provinces which are super high tax development that is just the way to go i'm gonna continue to build some more workshops around my country and churches because churches considering all the taxation bonuses we got are actually worth it for us right now a few barracks as well around the place of course and let's get some of those juicy marketplaces in the northern bits in the english channel think you got something that belongs to me aragoon yeah, scumbugs, how dare you take my land away? We'll make Scotland free again. That was totally a Scottish accent, and I know this is not fighting for Scottish independence, but I just wanted to make a Scottish accent. I found it. Sometimes you kind of need a, an excuse to make weird accents. That was one of them. So yeah, deal with it, okay? Not my problem, bro. Leaving the coalition against me, now that I've declared war on a couple of the coalition members here. Yeah, wussies. Yeah, big fat uh, wussies. Oh, unfortunately, our absolute chat of 
Cavalier died and we um, we got this guy instead now. Oh boy. What is he? 4-3-3. Three, three. He's not super bad, but he's not amazing. 2-1-4 on the other hand is dog shit. So um, we're gonna we're gonna have to see what we do about this boyo here. This is in fact a great opportunity to uh, get as much trade in the Genoese note as we can from all of the Italian nations we're fighting right here. Whilst we're chilling with this war, let's do some of the uh, smaller, easier missions like the Lar Valley Chateau that offers one base manpower in the Lar Valley as well as nobility, loyalty, equilibrium plus 5% or 50 admin and some ducats. I'm gonna take the nobility equilibrium so we can actually cancel some of those privileges we gave out by mistake at the start of the campaign. Same goes here. Let's make this a full core and afterwards let's uh, develop the province of Armour a little bit so we uh, get another mission done. Okay, we got that dev, but we gotta dev up uh, Nantes as well since uh, we have too much devastation there. There you go. Now it's Gucci. We got 3.75 innovativeness and we got a Chilius Maximus Theologian that is cheaper for us to get. Plus, now we can do the Crown of France because we have more than 50 provinces in the French region and that's gonna give us a permanent 10 power projection and we get uh, 25 of each mana points as well. We can also do Face the Empire now where we get the Valoa Ring and we reveal the previous for the missions here. We can check now this has been updated with the uh, Kings of uh, Kings DLC and we can see the previews here at number one clickius you see sway the electorates uh, right by blood etc etc basically this is what happens when you're trying to go and uh become the hreu emperor which we already are second preview here is not available because we are already the hre emperor we would have seen this if we did not become the hre emperor already so yeah the second one is essentially just dismantle the hre and conquer all of it basically in a nutshell so let's click here so we can accept this bad boy and we need to get four of our electors to um, vote for us. We don't have four, really? Oh, damn, these guys aren't voting for us anymore. Okay, it's because I canceled the alliance with them. We can fix that. And we also need to produce 15 monthly Diplo. So we're going to have to focus on Diplo then. We need 50 Imperial Authority and 95 Legitimacy to do this mission. And for this one, we just got to make sure no HRE provinces are outside HRE bounds. So we're going to have to fight Danzig and Poland for that. And Denmark, apparently. To do secure the Alpine Pass, we just need... Luzzo. Now, I didn't cobbledrate them, so that would be a little bit of extra aggressive expansion. But do I really care about 13 aggressive expansion? Like, really, really do I care about it? Nah, fuck that shit, man. We're gonna do our mission, everybody! <laughs> yeah, boy. There you go. Now, we got a permanent claim on the entirety of the Italian peninsula. Plus, we got minus 10% aggressive expansion for the next 20 years. We can also do secure Liguria and Milano improve five times, and then we can do the next mission as well. I I'd say the flow of uh, getting these missions is fairly easy, man. We're, we're, we're having an absolute blast here. I feel like France is my second favorite nation in uh, King of Kings so far after my Byzantine campaign, which is why I kind of want to turn this into a multiple parts series, essentially, right? Go up to 1821 like we did with uh, Byzantium. Excuse me, what the actual fuck? <laughs> I just disinherited the other guy and I'm getting freaking Napoleon Bonaparte as my new freaking leader here, bro. Six, five, freaking six. You what, buddy? This man's gonna have so many hunting accidents. It's not even funny right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to uh, time warp and prevent those hunting accidents. You get it? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, that's happening. Shut up, okay? You would do the same. I've reached the point in the campaign when I'm so strong, it really doesn't matter anymore who goes into a coalition against me and who doesn't. So yeah, I'm not gonna pretend like I actually am worried about coalitions anymore from now on. Also, a little side note here, I know most of you know this already, but in case you don't know, whatever you set up as your war target is gonna be cheaper to take in the war deal, so make sure you directly take that and you can give the rest here as uh, provinces for your vassal. Also, it begs the question, why did you choose a 9 development province instead of the freaking 18 development Messina. I fucked up, okay? <laughs> That's why I fucked up. I didn't realize I chose Agrigento. I actually thought that I, uh, I chose Messina. So yeah, it do be like that sometimes. People make is a mistake. I'm gonna be uh, upgrading this province a little bit here. We need to get eight times upgraded. There you go, we got it. So now we can do the crown seat of Paris, which in turn means we get diplomatic annexation cost reduction and estate influence minus 10% plus reform progress per monthly admin points. So we got quite a few uh, reform progress there. Next up, we got 
gotta do the movement of centralization so we just need to get rid of the uh, french strong duchies and no more subjects with their capital in the french region that means we gotta get rid of uh savoy and provence because they both have their capital here oh and nevers as well so three of them we gotta get rid of then we're gonna get the french absolutist monarchy tier one government reform that is significantly better than the french feudalism that we have right now which prohibits switching government rank so we're gonna be able to get the empire rank once we have the french absolutist monarchy and i'm also gonna get the temples and cathedrals give an extra 33 percent local tax and minus two local unrest considering that we already have so many tax modifiers that added into the fray equates to us making 116 total income out of which 56 of that is from taxation alone in the freaking 1480s it's also about time we get our flagship which is going to be a light ship with the extra trade power per ship and fleet the movement speed so that's plus two because we also have the movement speed from our naval doctrine and the privateering efficiency now we're doing this and we're also getting some Carax because we got a mission where we have to have 20 percent of our fleet as Carax to do said mission and get basically claims on eventually the entirety of the british isles making it even cheaper to quarrel that stuff in the process always vital to lower the autonomy boys whenever you integrate your uh, vassals because the autonomy is going to be by default at 60 autonomy unless you have a core on said provinces that you integrated so we have become the hre emperor we have the backing of pretty much everyone we've got all of the french region the netherlands and almost all of italy if we take into account the fact that we have naples we also have a pretty strong economy a really strong army and i would love to see where this campaign heads to if you guys want to see that too don't forget to leave that like and hey until the next time check out my awesome byzantine campaign for king of kings and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.